girl this looks like you know i will wait until this person's car has left the parking lot hopefully it's not too loud because i don't want to start this video over everybody welcome back to my youtube channel and i want to talk to you guys about how i got a 20 euro flight from pani sicily to malta i was looking at airbnbs in berlin because i was planning on traveling to germany from sicily and i saw a few articles where they were talking about how the german government was thinking about banning airbnbs at least entire apartment airbnbs or entire home airbnbs a lot of people were commenting on it but i wasn't quite sure whether or not it was happening when it was happening or if it was even happening at all but it was just commentary that was going on you know underneath a lot of these articles that i was reading and so i just decided that i didn't want to go into a situation where i wasn't sure what was going on so i decided that i was going to forego that whole entire trip to Berlin, which really sucked because I I wanted to go to Germany badly. At this point, I'm trying to figure out, after I decided that I wasn't gonna go to Germany, I decided that I needed a place to go before I go to Denmark because there's now a gap in my vacation. And because I took the city out, I took Germany out, so now I had to replace it with something else. So I was talking to my friend Kenton, <laughs> And he was telling me about the show that he used to watch when he was a kid. I can't remember the name of it, but in the show, there was this guy that I think the, the lead character was from a European country called Malta. When he watched the show, he was just telling himself, like, when I grow up, I definitely have to go to Malta because they talked about Malta so much on the show and how beautiful it was and how he couldn't wait as a kid. He couldn't wait to go to Malta. And so he was like, you know, that's someplace that I always wanted to go. And I always said that when I went to Europe, I would go to Malta. So I'm looking up. Sicily to Malta on one of those booking engines I don't really remember which one it was but a flight popped up and it was 10 euros at first I thought maybe these are the fees I thought that they were the fees or the taxes or maybe you know whatever so I asked one of my friends who had traveled to Europe before and I told her and she was like no that's not I don't think that's the taxes that's how much it really costs and I, I was like no that's not possible for it to be 10 euros to go from one country to the next by flight that's not possible so she was like yes it is possible you know and um, and she was like what what airline is this and I was like Ryanair and she she said yes that's what they do that's how cheap it is there's like a bunch of budget airlines in Europe and Ryanair is like the cheapest one and when I finally decided on the date uh, because we changed the day I think we went like two days later than I had originally planned to go to Germany and so I ended up paying like 19 euros for my flight from Trapani Sicily which is in Italy to Malta 19 euros when I told my co-worker Kenton who had originally told me about it he was livid he was like what you're actually going on my dream trip like <laughs> we joked about it but he was like, I am so pissed. I'm so mad at you that you're going on my dream trip. But I know he was happy. So after that, you know, I ended up going to Malta. So we're in Malta and it was really nice. We stayed at a small town. I can't remember the name of the village that we stayed when we were in Malta, but it was really close to the airport. Um, I'm gonna put the name right here. But we stayed in a small village and it was really nice. The people were so accommodating. We had a three bedroom Airbnb that was newly renovated. It was huge. It was so big until my aunt told me, she said, you know, I don't think that we should rent Airbnbs that are this big anymore. It was just too much space and we didn't need that much space. So that was that. And I think, like I said, it was 47 euros. Uh, and then it was, I think the cleaning fee was like six bucks. Yeah, so uh, we went there. I didn't go to any other city except Gozo. And so we decided that we were gonna get a tour because they told us, you know, it was take it would take us to all the attractions. So we bought the tour. We got on the tour, I think it was like 20 euros per person. So that's 60 euros for all three of us. And we got on the ferry. When we got off, the tour bus was waiting for us. And they took us all through the city and we saw some of the sites. It was a hop on, hop, hop off tour. 
and we saw you know a lot of the sites and they stopped at a few places the destination that we were really trying to get to the only place that we were interested in getting to was the azure window like the other the other stops they made they were beautiful but the azure window was really the destination so we finally get to the azure window and it is just so beautiful when I was doing the research on the attractions in Malta, the Azor window popped up. And when it popped up, the first article that popped up on it was the Game of Thrones article on locations that they had shot in. And they had shot at the Azor window in the first season of Game of Thrones. And the Azor window was the backdrop for the Dothraki camp. Cool, yeah. let's, 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 let's have a moment of silence for all that is Jason Momoa, please. When we got there, it was so breathtaking. It was just so beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful sights that I had ever seen. One of the most beautiful landscapes, one of the most beautiful vistas. It was just so gorgeous. I'm from the Bahamas and Listen, my country is gorgeous. I will tell anybody that and you, if you Google the Bahamas, if you've been to the Bahamas, you know how beautiful the Bahamas is. So when I say that the Azure window in Gozo is gorgeous, trust me, it was, it was just beautiful. And uh, so we saw it, we took some film, and I really regret that I didn't bring my bathing suit to go you know, in the water because a lot of people were in the water. And after that, you know, we took our photos and we were reflecting. It was so beautiful. We were talking about how gorgeous it was. So I got on top and then I walked out onto like the cliff part of the Azor, like right on top of the arch. I walked up. I did not know that it was illegal to do that. I just assumed that it was okay because a bunch of people was there, which is not a good thing. You should always ask before you do things when you're traveling. But I ended up walking on the arch and I went all the way to the edge. So when we were done doing that, we just went to the restaurant because they had a restaurant right there. So we went to the restaurant and we ate. Um, we were talking, you know, just reflecting on how great the trip is going so far. I mean, we were having a good old time. We were relaxed in the restaurant. So we come out of the restaurant and when we come out of the restaurant, it's about an hour and a half later, <laughs> not even monitoring the time or anything like that because we were told that the bus comes every 30 minutes, there's a bus that's stopping at the Azor window. So we were good. So at this time, we've already been at that location for an hour and about 45 minutes. And this is around, let's say about one or two o'clock in the day. So after that, uh, we eat and we find there's like this tree that's close to the, the water or whatever. So there's this big shade, this tree with so much shade under it. So we go under there and we are laughing. We're just cracking a bunch of jokes. And I mean, we were just having the time of our lives. You know, when you're on a vacation and you're not at any attractions or you're not in the Airbnbs or you're just out and whether you're sitting in a square or under a tree or at a bench or at a bar and you're just focused on the person that you're traveling with and you're just having such a great time. So that's what we were doing. We were just laughing and we were talking about, you know, situations back home and what we've been, you know, up to and things that have happened. And so we were just we were just laughing and all of a sudden I'm noticing that the sun is starting to set <laughs> and I'm like can somebody tell me why the sun is setting like <laughs> I know that that's something crazy to ask but I think that's how stunned I was because I'm like hold up the sun is setting and I have not seen any of those red tour bus so we're like hold on what's going on let's ask we were pulled from that daze or pulled from that world our little bubble that we had made under that tree. And we were just in a panic. We were like, oh gosh, what are we gonna do? You know, we tried to ask some of the vendors. We were like, you know, what time is the bus coming? Do they know if the bus stops running at a certain time? And they're like, we think that the buses have stopped running. So I went to the restaurant and I called the bus, the number that was in the back of the brochure. And they were like, oh, we're so sorry, but uh, the bus stops running at 4.30. And I'm like, 4.30? How are we gonna get from where we are to the ferry 
that I had no idea what time it stopped running. How are we gonna get there? Because a lot of the persons that were at, at Gozo, a lot of persons that were not on the tour buses, those persons had hired cars to wait for them while they took photos or while they ate at the restaurant and then they would leave with those hired cars. So there was there were no taxi services. There was a taxi stand, but there were no taxis. And the local transport, the bus, did not come there you know so it was like what do we do so we were talking to one of the vendors and we were like you know is it possible that we can use a phone to call a taxi or something like that so she was like you know my cousin he's a taxi driver so he'll i can call him and he'll charge you about 15 euros to take all three of you guys to the um ferry so i'm like oh finally we were there for 45 minutes no lie waiting and we were just in a complete panic because the next day we were flying out so there was no such thing as sleeping in gozo for the night that was not going to happen and like i said we didn't know you know if the ferry was going to stop running or what time it was going to stop running we just did not know what time the ferry was going to stop sailing so we made it spoke to the taxi driver it was like a little truck imagine a little truck with like a covering over it that was the taxi and my aunt and my cousin were in the back and we enjoyed that <laughs> we thought it was so authentic like we were those tourists that come to the bahamas and they're like show us the huts <laughs> that's how we were over there we were like this is it this is living you know such a new experience so yeah he dropped us right in the nick of time as soon as we walked in there was a ferry that was there and we were able to hop on now to some really bad news i was in malta in october of last year so that was what five months ago uh last month there was a hurricane in malta and the azure window just went into the sea i mean half of the arch broke off and it fell into the sea which is just so devastating for the people of malta their economy it, it, it's really hard for them right now i'm sure because that was one of their main attractions and coming from a country that is basically tourism driven um you know i, I my heart really goes up to them in that regard when it comes to you know that's something that a lot of people profited from there was a whole industry surrounding that location i feel really bad about that and you know it, it really sucks um i think i read an article that was saying that the government was planning on rebuilding the azure window or rebuilding the arch i'm not really sure whether or not that is true but I, i'm just hoping that they can you know just recover from that when I told my friend Kenton, who had originally told me about the trip, when I told him, I said, dude, the Azure window just broke off and fell into the ocean. He was like, oh my God. So not only did you take my trip, now I won't even get to see what I wanted to go there and see in the first place. <laughs> Head explodes. <laughs> so yeah, that was my trip to Malta. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.